Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Liverpool Connection podcast. Uh, this is our uh, story episode uh, with just me, Dazza, today, um, all the way from Ireland. I'm, I'm really excited to uh, have a chat with our next guest, um, just because some of his uh, musical influences are just like mine. I would say like New Order. Mm. Um, they're a big one, still love them uh, to this day. Uh, but from Irish indie pop band, give yeah. it a, a, a twist. I would, I would say, uh, yeah. Have you go that. indie, or you can go pop. But uh, it is the drummer from uh, upcoming Irish band Modern Love. It is Kian McCluskey. Welcome, mate. Cheers! Thanks so much for having me. Really excited to do this. It's a good experience. Oh man, it's it's a it's a good laugh. I I could actually like talk for two three three hours, but uh, you know, that's a lot of editing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth the the hassle it, it takes after it's done. Yeah. Well, and and especially like uh, it's so funny. I get I get messages um going, ah, oh, your podcasts are too long. I always tell them like, you you do realize there's a pause button, right? <laughs> you can pause it and you can come back. Yeah. And to the rest of the episode it's like <laughs> mind blown oh yeah i don't have to listen to it all in one go that's crazy <laughs> it's weird yeah <laughs> ian obviously uh, a liverpool fan or you would not be on this, <laughs> yeah. Be on yeah. this podcast um and i know in ireland it, there's a lot of it's either like usually liverpool man united um, and I and I saw your little story about uh, growing up, and one of your mates was a Chelsea supporter. Tried to uh, mm. get you to the dark side, but your dad knew better, right? Yeah. So what happened was uh, this was around the time when Chelsea they were in the, like the, the first Mourinho era. So it was that they were just like unplayable, and made, like the best team ever, and we were like kind of terrible. I think we had like Marientes up top, and he wasn't really doing it. We had, I think Milan Barros was still knocking around there somewhere. And I was like, God, this is, I don't, I'm not enjoying this. And then uh, I, he was kind of older than me as well. So I kind of looked up to him. He was like a, like a cool older brother type. And he was like, Oh, why are you didn't support in Liverpool? You should be supporting Chelsea. And he gave me one of his old jerseys with Drogba on the back. And I came into the house and I was, I was about six or seven. And I came in and I was like, Oh, yeah, I think I want to support Chelsea now. And my dad just took the jersey off, threw it away. And was like, you can either support Chelsea and not live in this house, or you can support Liverpool and come home. And that that was it. That, there was no, there was no talking about it. There was no discussion. It was like, you are absolutely not allowed to support Chelsea. You have to support Liverpool. Or you can't watch football. That was isn't, it. isn't that great? At like six years old, yeah. get out. If you want to put this Chelsea shirt on, get out. <laughs> yeah, that was literally, and I, I'm so glad he did because I. I hate Chelsea more than other teams now. But at the time, I, I don't know. I just, I loved, I don't know what it was. I just wanted to support Chelsea and it just, it wasn't happening. I, I was made to be a Liverpool fan and I, I'm glad of it now. Yeah, and I'm sure your dad is as well. <laughs> oh, delighted. Yeah, delighted. So um, first, um, you were telling me you've been to Anfield um, and just once, right? Yeah, just the ones I was supposed to go when I was a bit younger and it never never came through. I've only been the one time, yeah. And that 2017, it, it's always like you always remember what day it was and who you played, yeah. like always on your on your fir- first time. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, Palace, Liverpool Palace at, at three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday, I think. And we it was in the middle of that Coutinho uh nonsense that was going on where he he was pretending he was injured but he wasn't really injured he just wanted to go and I really wanted to see him because he was like the best player at the time and uh, he didn't he didn't end up showing up at all so I was a bit good about that but we bet we won 1-0 it was a terrible game but we won and I got a couple of really rank uh, Carlsbergs <laughs> and that, was, that was my lasting memory of it it was like this is the worst tasting beer I've ever had so yeah that's what that's when Coutinho did fake the uh, back injury, wasn't it? And then that was the one, yeah. And then actually went off to uh, the Brazil squad. Mm, that was it, yeah. And we were yeah. all like, "Do you know what? He can go if he wants. Yeah. We don't need him." Uh, no, nah, I, I, I mean, it, it's so bizarre to like 
see how he was for us because he was an amazing player. He really was. He was unstoppable, yeah. And, you know, if it wasn't for him, though, we wouldn't have got Verge and we wouldn't have got Alisson. Yeah. Um, but then he went to Barcelona and did absolutely nothing. And now he's basically a substitute for Aston Villa. Well, no, yeah. he, went, he went to Munich, didn't he? After went Barcelona. to Munich and got that Champions League medal yeah. that he was looking for. But I doubt... It was the way he wanted to. Like he could, like he could have stayed with us, and if because we were, I think we still would have been in the ascendancy anyway. If he had stayed, I think we probably still would have signed a good goalkeeper, and we might have got Verge as well. But it's 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 sad, but I don't feel too bad for him because of the way he left. If he had left at the end of the season, I would have been like, yeah, fair play, you can go. You finished out your year, but to do it in the middle of the season like that, I thought it it didn't sit right with anyone. I don't think. Yeah, well, he, he's got his come up and hasn't he? So uh, I, I could care yeah. less. I, I just don't understand some Liverpool fans, like when uh, when he was available again, they were like, yeah, let's bring him back. I'm like, no. Yeah, I don't want him here. No way. <laughs> like a, a, a little rat. He doesn't deserve to come back. Yeah. yeah exactly. And I, I'm, I'm so happy, you know, he's not. Um, so Coutinho was your favourite player. I, he wasn't my favorite player. Uh, he was uh, he was just very clearly the best player at that time. I think like we had like Sadio Mane was probably my favorite at that time because uh, we didn't have Salah yet. I don't think did we? No, no. Yeah, so it was it was probably Sadio Mane was my favorite and Firmino as well. No, actually, Bobby is my favorite. Bobby was has always been my favorite since he came. I love him. There's something about him, isn't there? It's just his smile. It's just, it's infectious, man. He's just he's, he seems like such a nice guy. He loves God. He loves white skinny jeans, and he just <laughs> he loves scoring deadly goals. I, I love him. And he plays the piano, I think. Yeah, and he's got the worst neck tattoos you've ever seen, but they suit him. They suit him really well, and that's he wears them. He wears them well, and he gets away with some fashion faux pas. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I know I couldn't wear the stuff he wears. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing like a brown. My girlfriend's brown. Sunflower cardigan right now, so I don't know if I have any legs to stand on criticizing his fashion, but it, some of it is a bit questionable, yeah. But I love um, him. Ah, you, you've got to, I, I, you know, that there, there is talk like about his contract as well. Um, mm-hmm. I would love to see Bobby probably stay for another year, but I think because this is going to be his last big hoorah, mm-hmm. I have a feeling he's going to try and get. Two three years, and I don't think I don't think Liverpool will give it to him. It's a tough one because, like, I do love him so much, but then to be a top team, you do have to know when to let players go and to let them because, like, you know, Ferguson was the master at it for years. Just you'd think, like, what's he doing getting rid of him? And then it turns out, like, ah, that was why. Yeah. So I think it might be time after this season to kind of let him go if he wants to go. Well, I think that's that's one of uh, been our one of our one yeah out of many issues at the moment is keeping mm-hmm. players that should have been let go like Ox and Cater should not should not be in this squad. I know, yeah. I actually it, forgot he was Oxley Chamberlain was a Liverpool player, and then we were playing Leicester. Or was it the game before where he started in the three up top? Yeah. And I was like, he still plays for us, but. Why? Why is he here? He like I just I, I couldn't figure it out. Well, the biggest one I, I think is he was about to be sold in the summer, and then he got injured in pre-season. Yeah. So he couldn't be sold, and then you know I mean some of these lads making hundred, hundred and fifty, you know, s- sitting in the in the you know patient room. Yeah. Just collecting a paycheck makes me sick. But I mean, because I've always cater to me. If he got a good run of games, he's a good player. But, you know, he's made a glass. I said, I've been saying that. I had said that about cater for the last four years. Like, if he just got a good run of games, but I actually, I I, I wash my hands with him. He, he is a good player. He's He's very, you know, attack minded and he goes at players. But yeah, he's just he's too injury prone. Like I, I can't I can't be saying that about him anymore. I just I want him away from the club. Cause he there's there's no point in keeping him. He can't stay fit. 
Well, I, I, I'm I'm looking at our our squad right now. You know, you've got you got Milner out of contract, Ox, Cater, uh, Bobby. I mean, that's four already. You know, yeah. Um, wh- what's your thoughts on like this whole FSG saga? Um, because if we don't go in for a midfielder in January. That means we're going to have to get at least three to four in the summer, and I don't see that happening. Yeah, I the thing with FSG is like, you know, no one was complaining for for the four or five years that it's ran very smoothly, and I think you know it's such a cyclical game. Like, I didn't think we were going to be able to sustain five, six seasons of getting ninety plus points. You know, so I think this season. I, that we do need a midfielder in January, definitely. But I think we need more than one midfielder. Like Henderson is kind of on his way out, even though he's still a very good player. He's a little bit too old to be leading the line like that. And Thiago probably has another year left in him. At like, And even at that, that might be a stretch. So I would say if FSG get one midfielder now and two in the summer, I'll be all right with it. But it, it, just, it's, it, kinda, it just depends because I... There's so many weird problems with the team that you can't quite put your finger on right now. I don't think you can really blame anyone solely, you know? Well, I mean, can you imagine, right, gearing up for for your biggest gig of your life, right, and then all of a sudden it's pulled. Yeah. Just, Just like our lads, they played 64 matches. They came one point away from winning the league. And one goal away from, you know, Madrid. Yeah, that that's that's got to get you, not just physically with sixty four games, but mentally as well to actually yeah. make yourself get back up and go. All right, you know, let's do this again. And then that first charity shield match against City, I was like, oh, it's on this season. It is. Yeah. On. And then and then all of a sudden I was like. Four or five injuries, and they're all muscle injuries. So you, you start going, all right, did, did they make a mistake by uh, doing this preseason tour? Uh, I know City only played two se- uh, two preseason games. And I don't even yeah. think they left England while, while we did. You know, we travelled to the Far East. And I think that was, I mean, again, it's, it's money related. Yeah. We, they, the team had to go to, you know, tick off the, the sponsor boxes. And I, and I yeah, think fulfill that, some contracts or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So then, you know, there was a problem right there. I, th- you know, we were in for Tushimene, you know, uh, the money was there. Uh, we got Nunes, but the money was there to get him. He chose Madrid, but we didn't have a backup. Uh, you know, obviously, yeah. the Bellingham talk. You know, it, it just seems to me like it's Bellingham or bust. Yeah, which is a really bad game plan to have because like Bellingham's one of the most sought after players in the world. Like even if he even if he comes and says, I want to play for Liverpool, you still need to have two or three backups because you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> and it just seems now like there's no plan to solve what's going on in the middle. And like I even think like I like Nunez, but he wasn't the player that we needed. Like we had Diaz, we had Jota, we had Salah, we have, well, now we have Gakpo as well, which again, it was another one where I was like, that's, yeah, that's grand, but like, where is the midfield? Like, what are we going to do about the midfield? So yeah. it's it's a weird one. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm glad we went in for Gakpo because, well, well because we've only got two, two, uh, two forwards that can actually, you know, play football at the moment. Uh, <laughs> I what what annoys me, I think, is not knowing really what's going on. Like Jota, they say February, but you don't really see much of him. Klopp yeah, doesn't yeah. really say much. Um, and then with Diaz, same thing, March. If he's back in March, that still means he's not match fit. So I, I believe that's why Gakpo came in. Plus, I think we're going to get him in the summer anyway. And then, you know, other teams were sniffing around just like they did with Diaz uh, last January. So I think that's why yeah. they got him. But yeah, it's it's just frustrating because I think 
we've we've all I think been too comfortable in the last four or five years with, with you know winning and coming really close that we've forgotten really how to lose. Well, see, that's the thing that I've been saying because I grew up watching Liverpool be abysmal. Like we were shocking for like 10 years, for my whole childhood. It was like Liverpool win the league. That'll never happen. I couldn't, I couldn't even fathom that ever happening. Like we had what was the season when we had like Jay Spearing in the middle and like Kiriakos at the back and like it's like Andy Carroll up front. And then we have Ricky Lambert was knocking around there at one stage. Yeah. Yep. Like the, I, I have always been from the start of us doing really well. There will come a point now when we're going to be rubbish again for a while. Like it's it, it's a part of the game. So I'm not actually taking this as hard as some other of my mates that are Liverpool fans who just can't believe what's going on. So I'm I think I've been like because I'm kind of nihilistic about it. I'm like, ah, sure, we'll be good now. And we'll be shite in a couple of years. And we'll be good again. And it's it's a game, like you know. So I think I'm able to like hopefully ride this wave out and wait a season or two, and maybe. It'll come good again. Maybe it won't, but it's all well, it's, part of the game, you know. It's do, it's do or die with a lot of Liverpool fans at the moment. You know, they're like they just figure, you know, is this a transitional period? Maybe is it just a a bad season? Probably. Will we be back? Of course, a Liverpool football. Yeah. But people just, uh, you know, they see the cities and now Newcastle as well, and they just think that's it. If we if we don't pump two hundred mil into January, into midfielders, we're we're not going to make top four. I still think we're going to make top four. I do. I I, yeah. I I I think some of the teams above us, like United and Spurs, they're they're they won't you know keep on winning. They're going to lose. What it's going to take is, I think, just hopefully ride the storm up until you know February, March. Hopefully we're in, we're in touch, touching distance of the top four. Get Jota, get Diaz back, and then see where we're at come May. You know, but uh, I'm not going to jump off a bridge already. Like like a lot of the the Twitter folk, you know, they're, they're yeah. in, in meltdown. You know, one day it's Klopp's fault, next day FSG, next day it's Allison's fault. You know, the, yeah. the club isn't doing well, and and uh, anybody that. Says Allison needs to go. needs needs a good old slap. Um, Have people been saying that about Allison? Oh, I, I, I've seen. It's... I've just seen some madness. I think just people have a dartboard with players' faces on it, and they just yeah. throw the dartboard, and then they go, "All right, today he needs to leave this football club." I mean, yeah. that man has given everything. We wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for him. I mean. The, the goal, Napoli save. The Napoli save the West is Brom, like what kicked West off Brom, everything. Yeah, West Brom header. We wouldn't have been yeah. in the Champions League. But, I mean, this season, he <clears throat> saved us so many times as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it was ridiculous what he did the other day against Wolves, and it should never happen again. Um, yeah. But he's human. Now, I think people forget these players are human. Yes, they make insane amounts of money, but they are human. They can switch off. That's that's yeah. just the way it is. You know, I'm sure yourself uh, as your bandmates know you can have a bad gig. I've had many bad gigs. I've had more bad gigs than good gigs. Oh. I'm only starting to. I'm only starting to have good gigs now. Bands doing well. We've had, like you know, it, it's. But I think as well with Liverpool, what I've noticed is a lot of a lot of people coming out of the woodwork suddenly in the last couple of years, being like, "Oh yeah, I love Liverpool. I love them." So I think we picked up a lot of kind of fair weather fans who maybe saw us get to the Champions League final in 2018. I kind of we were the underdogs then. And we went back and won it, and the next year we won the league, and we were we were like you know top three team in the world. You get a lot of people going suddenly. Oh yeah, I'm a Liverpool fan, and then they're all in, and then we start doing a bit of shit, and it's like, oh, uh, like Allison's the problem. Klopp's. The, it's like you don't know anything about football if you think that Allison is the problem. Yeah. For Liverpool, you know, it's it's just I, I I've noticed that a lot. I spe- even with Arsenal, like my mates an Arsenal fan, and there's loads of lads coming out suddenly being like, "I love Arsenal." Yeah, I've always supported Arsenal. It's like, did you? Did you really like? Can you name three of their players that from the last five years? Like, you probably can't. 
you know. Yeah, that's that's, that's the the fun the fun part. You know, uh, they'll have a they'll have a different team shirt on like underneath. So if you that that you know Liverpool aren't doing really well one week, take that Liverpool shirt off, and I've got you know a Newcastle or Arsenal one. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that, that, I mean, I've got an Arsenal mate, um, and, and you know, I'm um, I'm happy for him at the moment. Yeah, you know, uh, they they haven't been. They, they actually remind me of Liverpool two yeah. three years ago because they've got a couple of senior players in there like Shaka. But they've got these young, hungry players. You know, I love soccer. I, I, I know, think yeah. fantastic player. And Martinelli as well. God bless. I'd love to have Martinelli on our team. I know, yeah. But they, class, they yeah. just look, they look like what we were. Like the, there's engines in the midfield. That's what we're missing. I mean, I've I, I told people over and over again, you know, uh, you can only defend really what's in front of you. Um, yeah, Matip and Van Dyke, especially Van Dyke, have not been at their best. But you're supposed to defend from the front, and mm. you, I'm not seeing with D, when we had Diaz fit, he would, and same as Jota. But we're yeah. not defending from the front, and then we've got too much of a high line. So other teams have figured us out. They're just doing a ball yeah. over the top, you know, and yeah. getting. Speedy Gonzalez to run onto the ball and and score. That that's our biggest problem. So I think you know, and people say Klopp can only play one way, which is this is Genga pressing. Well, we can't Genga for nothing at the moment. Yeah, we're not really doing that. So I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. The, so- the, the other thing as well with, with that, um, what you were saying, like the the mid the midfield, like of Fabinho and Henderson, was so crucial to how good our defence was. But their legs seem to be kind of getting on a bit. They can't, and there's so much space in the middle. Like in, in, in the lines between, there's so much space all the time. So like, I, I've heard people say, like, oh, Van Dyke's finished. Like Van Dyke's done. And it's like, what are you talking about, man? Like, it, it's, it drives me insane. Because it's like, it's clearly that the whole team is not playing as a unit. Mm-hmm. And whatever it is, if it's morale, if it's injuries, if it's a combination of loads of different things, like to say that Van Dijk is like finished being an elite defender is just like it's bizarre. Well, and then the the other side of it is you know he's not the same player after the Jordan Pickford horror tackle. You know yeah, exactly. Yeah, it may, maybe he's not, but if that's only ten percent of who he really is, you know he's still ninety percent one of the world's best mm. centre backs. Uh, yeah, I just think it's a, a whole team thing. I just think it's l- lack of confidence at the moment. Things yeah. just aren't aren't going going our way. Uh, I, you know, Klopp Klopp's a, a world class manager. He'll he'll figure it out. Um, I, I have n- no problem with that. I just want to get <laughs> get past January. Uh, I mean, we we could play Brighton and Wolves. Twice in January, which is madness, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I just think the next game, Brighton, Brighton <laughs> scares me to death. They, it's not the team I want to play next. Um, I really don't. Yeah, no, they're they're, they're playing really well, and uh, you know, they, Trossard just seems to have our number every time he plays us. I was going to say it was Mope, but it is. It's Trossard, isn't it? He just he knows yeah. he can just get part. He he has something figured out in his brain but again it's the same thing like you're watching Liverpool against Leicester Leicester were trying to play it around at the back and I was like this is really stupid you're trying to pass through us you can literally just hoof the ball over the top and you'll probably get in I think Brighton know that straight away they just go straight for the over the top ball and it just gets us every time yeah it's it's scary but like I said I, I think we'll uh I think we'll get back to where we belong, but you know, get get some of these players back and hopefully another midfielder in January. Um, want to get it onto the band? Uh, yeah. So, are you all like, uh, like early mates, or did you meet up as a band? You know, like a like they do. They put it in the newspaper. I need a I need a drummer. I need a guitarist. The three me. 
uh, Barry, who's the singer, and Graham, the guitar player, have known each other since school. So I met Barry when I was like three years old. Like we went to primary school together. I've known him for like 20 years now at the stage. Um, and then I met Graham when I was like 11 or 12 in school. And we were kind of just mates who all liked music and just went, do you want to just jam out? Like, like me and Graham used to um, jam out in one of our mates' sheds. And I just dragged Barry by the collar. I was like, we need a singer. Learn how to play the guitar because I don't, I don't know anyone else. So just do it, <laughs> you know? And so Barry went away, learned how to sing and learned how to play the guitar. And then we were kind of just like, you know, making noise for a while. And then we met Danny. And that's when we kind of became a band then at that stage. So we were all mates who happened to be in, into the same kind of music and just decided we should start a band as opposed to being like, let's do this, this way, this way, and this way, you know? Well, did, did, did you have the thought process of, you know, we'll just do it for fun or you were like, you know, once you start kind of practicing more going, you know what, we're all right. See, we weren't. We were really, really bad for really long. So I, I think it was always for fun. Like for years, it was just like a bit of crack. And then we like we did nothing to try and get signed or to do anything until we were like 18 or 19. Like we were literally just in people's rooms, in pubs, playing to like four people, getting drunk. You know, it was not uh, wasn't a serious thing, but it was it was all we ever did, you know. Because it was, again, it was like a way of hanging out with mates. Our way of hanging out with mates was getting a few beers, going to the practice room and playing music. So I think we kept that for a long time. And then once we started writing good songs, that's when we were like, oh, this is good enough to be played on the radio. Someone should, people should hear this. And that's when it kind of started getting a bit real. Was that um, 2016 is when you... You uh, band, did you form the band like properly? Well, yeah, the, the lineup that it is today we formed in 2016. There was a, a kind of a previous version of it with the three of us. That was 2015 or 2014. And then Danny coming in was 2016. And that's when the band like started. How's, how's the your writing process? Because, you know, in a lot of bands, it's usually, you know, a lead singer and the guitarist. Do you all write the songs? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a four, like we split all the songwriting royalties, 25, 25 each. Like we're all like, I don't think the band could exist without all four of us doing like, I write lyrics to songs. Sometimes Barry will write drum parts. Danny could write the guitar. Like it doesn't, it's just whoever we only have our roles as drummer, singer, guitarist, bass player on stage. But when we're writing, anyone could come up with any part of the song. Yeah, I I I think that's the really cool way to go about it. You know, because one one of my favorite bands is uh, Depeche Mode. I just mm. I just love them, um, and you know, most of their is is Martin Gore, obviously, and Dave Gahan. So with all four of you, yeah, gotta be. Um, but how how do you sit down though and like just you know? With somebody comes up with a melody first. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, because we've known each other for so long, there, there's no like, there's no ego within the band. Do you know what I mean? Like, so Barry, that he's not the the stereotypical singer. Is like, it's I'm doing this my way. I'm the singer. I'm doing this. We're like, he like Barry isn't the singer of the band when it's the four of us writing a song. He's just another person who's there. So if someone writes a melody and someone else goes, that's really cool, give it to me, put it on my laptop, I'll do this to it. Someone else hears it and goes, oh, that's really cool, let me add this, let me add that. And it just builds and builds and then it's done. And that's the way we don't, we never have arguments about like how a song should sound. If someone is really adamant that it should sound a certain way, the other three go, well, he seems to know what he wants, so we'll just let him do it. It's very democratic and healthy. No, no, uh, no throwing beer bottles at the uh, bandmates, eh? No, not, not in the songwriting room. Anyway, when we're out on a night out and someone does something stupid, that's a different story. But uh, in, the, in the songwriting department, we're good. We're very good. On um, your debut, obviously, you know, 
to hear your own song that you've put in, you know, your heart and soul in to hear it on the radio. I mean, that's got to feel amazing for, for all of you. Yeah. I, I remember the first, the first song we got played, the first song that got on the radio in Ireland was a song called Bop that we released. It was like our first like professional release with like management and with a PR company. And it was like, we went into an actual studio to record it and stuff. And uh, I remember hearing that on the radio and being like, that's me, it's my song. And someone else is playing it to me. That's mental. It was uh, it, it, every time you hear your song on the radio, like we got played on BBC there a couple of times. You're just sitting there going like, that's me. And that's, I'm not even in that country and they're playing it. It's like, it's bizarre. It, it never gets easier or like you can't wrap your head around it anymore. The more it happens, you know. And um you know, obviously with bands, the gigs, the gigs are just, uh, brings you closer to fans. Um, and, you know, you've got the the US tour coming up. As you said before, you've not set foot in the States before. Yeah. So, you know, the US is a vast, you know, vast place. Like, it's not like Ireland or, or back home, Liverpool, you know, takes you like two, three hours to go across the country. Are you do are you doing the bus or are you doing doing play? Yeah. I think because we're doing like East Coast, Middle America, kind of Midwest America, and then we're going right up to Seattle and doing the West Coast. So I, there there'll surely have to be some planes involved. I don't know how we're gonna get from like Nashville to Seattle in two days. I don't I don't think that's even possible. So yeah, you hope not by not by a greyhound bus. Oh no, oh no, we have like we have a guy coming over. Like we have our own van that we're renting, and we're like we're we're hopefully not taking any greyhound buses. I've heard they're like the pits. They're like the worst of the worst to get. Yeah, well, usually you, you always get on the one that the bathroom is broken. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, naturally, you have a seat next to the bathroom that's broken, which is even <laughs> worse. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound like that. That sounds like how I imagined us touring America would go. But we've surprisingly we've we've done over COVID. We kind of built the fan base that we couldn't really see because we couldn't go out and gig. Mm -hmm. So once we toured the UK there in uh, in November and all the shows sold out, we were like, oh, we're like a we're like a real band now. I didn't even I had no <laughs> idea, you know. Well, you get that that immediate feedback, don't you? I mean, yeah, you, people actually, you know, it's great to hear your your song on the radio, but when you actually see people singing it back to you, you're going singing the words that you yeah. wrote in like your bedroom at three in the morning, and they're singing it back to you. And you're like, oh, you actually like care about this? That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah, I I, I can't wait for you to to come over to the US and um. The, the the where I'm based out of Austin, the lads are actually coming to South by Southwest for the whole week. So yeah, you 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 literally will fall in love with Austin. Um, yeah, it, it it sounds a bit silly, but they call it the musical capital of the world. Yeah, like, but yeah, they have since like forever. You know, do I think it is? No, you know, I'm I'm. You're from Liverpool, so you could never say that Austin is the, the musical exactly. centre. Exactly. Like... But they have amazing musicians. Uh, the food's amazing. Just the, the the quality at South By. You know, the buskers during South By come out and sound better than some of the bands that are actually in, yeah. you know, in the, in the venues. But, yeah, I mean, if you're going to come to Austin for South By, it's great that you're not just coming – to play you're going to absorb you know you can go yeah. see bands yourself you know i'm sure you'll have a few days off as well yeah we have like a week there i think we have like five six days there so we're gonna really take it in as much as we can we have a couple of mates from other bands that we've played with and bands we know from ireland that are also going to be there so it's going to be like a whole big irish yeah. connection in austin it's gonna be great <laughs> headline modern love go missing <laughs> that's yeah yeah that's definitely going to happen at some point, and say. So. <laughs> um, so you've got a, a brand new EP out called "Oh My Mind," right? So mm -hmm. The latest single, which struck me because it's a new order verse. Exactly. Which, is that was that meant meant to be? 
I was very much that I literally remember being at a party uh, and a forest came on by the cure. And I was like, why have we not made a song that sounds like a forest yet? So it was very like new wave inspired, not specifically new order, but like I had songs like age of consent and, you know, um, the guitar riff from, is it love vigilantes? Is that the song? First song on low life. Um, I think that's the one. Yeah. I, I, I had that riff in my mind and then I kind of paired that with the a forest by the cure inspiration, but it's yeah. Very, very new wave idea for sure. Yeah, I th- I think uh, I think the the kids. <laughs> so I'm a bit older than you, lot, so uh, I think the kids will will dig that. I I dig it. I mean, if, if music's good, it's good. It, yeah, it does very much. It it's the same with like um, you know. I've never been into country. I I I, I don't understand it because I, I don't I don't own a truck or a gun yeah. or have a big dog that's like or or my wife left me. So yeah really soon understand those lyrics but uh <laughs> I, I'm, I'm i do i'm more into like you know some of the willie nelson uh stuff it's just like old sounds very bluesy country yeah it's, very singer songwriter kind yeah. of vibes yeah yeah rather than this like pop country stuff that uh i i it's a million miles away from what what i ever <laughs> would, it's would probably do. like inescapable over there as well in austin as well that it, because it's not that prevalent over here, but you kind of hear some songs from it and you go, whoa, I, I don't even know who that's for, but it's not for me anyway. Yeah. That's that's one good thing about Austin. You know, you, you can have like, it's a, it's, it is a mecca for musicians. I mean, there's loads of recording studios here. You know, it's Austin big on rap, definitely yeah. big on blues, soul, rock, rock you know, uh, pop as well. So yeah, it's just a melting pot, and uh, yeah, I'm glad these lads are, are going to be able to come over here and uh, you know get some sun on your face as well in March. We well, we definitely need it. We're that all pasty over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need some sun. Like if you can see out my window now, it is one of the bleakest days I've seen in the last while. It's lashing rain and it's dark and it's grey and it's horrible. And it's a so, Tuesday. And it's a Tuesday, the worst day as well. So when when can we uh, expect an album? So I think the plan is we're in the process of like releasing singles now to build up to our third EP. And I think we want, we always wanted to kind of make four EPs and then do an album because we wanted when the album comes out, there'd be enough people to really make it worthwhile because you don't want your album to come out that you spent, well, we've been a band for what, like nearly like seven, eight years. Like you don't want all that work for an album to come out and flop. So we want to do maybe this EP and then one more to really hopefully build a big enough fan base to where when we release the album, it's worth it, you know? What what I like too is like you're doing vinyl as well, aren't you? Yeah. It's mainly for us. We asked our label, we were like, can we just, can you even just make four vinyls just for us so that we can have them? And they were like, why don't we just make loads? And we were like, well, yeah, if you want, but we want them primarily. Yeah, it seems like the the vinyl went away for a bit, mm. and then, you know, because I I I love to physically hold vinyl. I yeah. like the smell of it, but it's the artwork as well. It's you know, it's not. It's it's just when when you open a crisp piece of vinyl, you know, you take the plastic off, and you just and you look at every single word. On, yeah. on that on that final yeah I, I mean you feel closer to the artist there's something weird about it you feel like you're you're more invested because you have this big physical thing and you can see all the artwork that the artist wanted you to see you can read all the lyrics you can see everything and it's i get it i get why people are so into it for sure yeah i mean it costs a little more but you know i i like the the little cracks and hisses on vinyl yeah. as well. i know it sounds weird but that's that's what it was supposed to sound like you know yeah no there's so many people like that it's definitely it's back in such a big way now it's i collect like cassettes just because i think they're cool i don't know they don't even sound good but i just like the look of them but i it's the same reason people collect vinyls it's like the sound of it being able to hold it and then it looks nice in like a 
and you have loads of them all together as well. You don't have the Walkman, do you? I was actually on eBay looking for one recently. It's really embarrassing, but I, I just I want one. I want those really old, like like mid nineties, like headphones that are kind of rubbish. But I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> And, and and don't have any like bass or anything in them. That no low end whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. yeah, just wrecks your ears, but <laughs> looks cool. So, so my next question is: ultimate gig and festival yeah. lineup. Oh, okay. Ultimate gig, like for us to play our own headline yeah. gig. Yes. Um, I think. I don't know. I I never really aimed too high with like what gigs we could play. I mean, like the three arena in Dublin would just be, you know, something else. There's like I think like a like the big a big hometown show in like the three arena, like the RDS or something, and then like maybe like Madison Square Garden or something. I don't know. I always feel like whenever I talk about these things, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't <laughs> want to get too like lofty with it, but. Uh, Madison Square Garden or the Three Arena would be that'd be alright it'd be alright with me and, and then for, and for your uh, ultimate like festival lineup, like for you to be on with your favourite bands they, they have to still be like active and like alive no, no, no. no. Ah. right okay I'm gonna put I'm gonna put us on the Friday it's just fuck it why not I'll just, we're going to be one of them. And then I have Nirvana headline on Saturday. And I'll have, I don't know, Michael Jackson on Sunday. Maybe that's, I know it's like a controversial one, but I, I'd like to see Michael Jackson again. That would be good. I think we all will. Yeah, well, I mean, you do your gig on Friday. That means you can just chill out and watch well, that, everybody else, yeah. That was the thought behind it yeah because i want to be you know i want to be able to actually no i'm going to take us off that i'm going to put someone else on that for the friday maybe uh i don't know trying to think really hard uh do you know a band called um the blue nile you know the blue nile not off the top of me yet they made two or three of my favorite albums ever, like in the mid eighties, very like uh, shoegazy poppy stuff. Um, they have one album called hats. It's brilliant, but they're not a band anymore, but the blue Nile headlining on Friday, I'll say. So what you are doing then? You're not, you're not playing. Uh, no, we, well, we'll do like one of the side stages and then we'll, <laughs> so we'll get free in so we can see it all, you know? Yeah. That's a, that's a, another great thing about uh, Austin. We have a ACL festival which takes place in October and it's two, mm. two running weekends and, th- and they do it really well. Um, yeah. I've on a Friday night, I saw Depeche Mode Saturday night. I saw the cure wow. and then the Sunday, I believe it was Lionel Richie. That's a, the first two made sense together. Yeah. And then Lionel Richie, that's, that's a mad one. Yeah. To just throw is. in there. But it, what, what's crazy is that the, the the Saturday that we saw the cure, um, it was just pissing down with rain, and I've never seen Robert Smith smile so much in my. <laughs> you know, singing these like morbid but yet brilliant songs, and just seeing everybody just drenched. Yeah, that's yeah. it. He sounds like seems like the kind of guy who just loved that. Yeah, just, like the rain would work perfectly with the cure's kind of vibe. I think. Yeah, that that was probably one of one of my favorite like three days of like music. I mean, in between there was there was some absolute shite. Um, yeah, as as per usual with any festival, yeah. Yeah, you're not you're not gonna always get you know the the music you like, but that's why you have so many different stages. You can you know go. Uh, I've listened to you, and I'm not into you. I'll go see. Yeah. No, so yeah, but uh, yeah, um, looking forward to. Uh, you lads coming over. Um, yeah, can't wait. And, you know, we'll, we'll end on a, hopefully a good note. Um, back, back to Liverpool. Where where do you see us in the next few months? Are, are you as hopeful as I am for top four? Yeah. No, I think, I think we're going to get top four. And I think, 
even if you see a team like Chelsea win the Champions League a year or two ago, had no right to win it. Like, you never know what could happen. We could win the Champions League, whole season's different, you know? We could, di- even if we got a good run, got to like the semi final of the Champions League, got top four, and then summer to like really gut the team and kind of. I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm not, uh, I'm not totally, you know, over it with Liverpool. I think there's still some good days this season to come. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, you, you can just go back to 2005. We had no right winning the Champions League with that, that's that team. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And it, just people need to put a bit more faith, faith into Klopp and the boys that, that can turn mm-hmm. it around. Yeah, Real Madrid scared the living crap out of me, but. I wish we were playing away first. I know, yeah. Coming back to Anfield in the second leg is yeah. Get, get a draw over over there and then bring it back home. But you know, on on any given night, if this if this, I know this team can play better than what what they have been. So you know, yeah. the, it's not all it's not all doom and gloom. The transfer window is not closed, everyone. Yeah, it, it's not closed. Even though you you think nothing's going to happen. You don't know. There's still two, two, two and a half weeks left. So we just which never... is loads of time, loads of time. Yeah, exactly. To happen. Just as long as we don't do uh, kind of what we did in the summer and we bought uh, Arter Mello on, on the last day. That was yeah. definitely a panic buy. Well, not, it's yeah. not even a panic buy. We didn't buy him; just loaned him, and he's been crock. Uh, yeah. You know, the it's just months. a bad transfer. Yeah, it's just not a good decision. Is what it was, but you know, I'm I'm with you, Kian. I I think we'll make top four. I think uh, you know, there's there's a lot to look forward to. Just uh, you know, let's see in the next few weeks if we can uh, get get a run together because this team can put ten ten to twelve game a winning run quite easily. Yeah. So even like I was thinking as well, like how far off are we from Arsenal now? It's like sixteen points or something, is it? 15, I think. 15 points. I, I don't think, I obviously don't think we're going to win the league at all. But we clawed back 14 points from City last season. 17. 17, exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll say, so like, I, I love the people that go, uh, you know, well, it technically wasn't 17 because we had two games in hand. But then I say, well, yes, we had to win yeah. those two games in hand. So yeah. technically, we were 17 points behind. Yeah. Uh, for some known reason, my brain, or, well, I think it's more my heart goes, I think we can still get second. Yeah, <laughs> I, the optimist insane. in me would, would yeah. like to hope, and then the realist is like, it probably won't. But again, you never know. We, we shouldn't have beat Barcelona 4-0 in Anfield, but we did. So you have to just stay on the hopeful side of it, or else what's the point in watching love, it? You know? I love your optimism, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not this optimistic about like general life, but just with Liverpool, I, I'm always I'm always optimistic about Liverpool. Well, uh, Kian, I really appreciate your time today, and um, please go and uh, check out Modern Love. Uh, and if you're in 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 uh, living in the states or even visiting, um, go check um, your website. Uh, if you Does go, it- uh, it's it's all Modern Love Band at, on Instagram on. Facebook on everything, modern love, one word, and then band after. Yeah. So if you go check that out, um, they've got the US tour date. So uh, please go check them out. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, enjoy life. Try, try not to uh, get uh, too down on the Reds, even though I wanted to throw my telly out the window the other day. And then, then I wouldn't have a telly. So uh, I didn't throw it out. So I just got a little, little, little upset to. An hour or so, but there's more things to worry about than uh, it's only a game. It's only a game at the end of the day, and it's there to entertain you. And if it's if it's good, it's good. And if it's not, you move on. You'd be all right, I'd say. See, good parting words. Well, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks again, Kian, and um, once again, everybody, thank you for. Uh, uh, joining us, uh, please like and subscribe and get your notifications going. Um, and uh, I'll look forward to uh, another story uh, next time. I'll see you later. Cheers. Thanks for having me.